A forestry contractor says a shortage of planters could topple the government's billion trees target if something is not done urgently to solve the labour shortage. The goal is to plant a mix of a billion native and exotic trees by 2028 to support a low emissions economy, protect the environment and create ongoing employment. MSD alone is looking to recruit 750 people into forestry jobs just this season. But it's difficult to get and keep workers in what is a physically demanding job. Some contractors report up to 80% absenteeism in some crews. So just how hard could it be to plant trees for a living? Well, we decided to find out using me as a guinea pig planter. Now, we took this very seriously. I planned to work a full day like any other crew member. Question is, did I make it? And to that end, our producer Bridget Burke and camera person Nick Munro came along to document the day and to speak to other workers so I could keep planting. Rotorua, O Dark Hundred. Time for a quick toilet paper audit and some stretches before a van full of sleeping giants pulls in too late to bail now. These lads were picked up at 5am in Murapara. ETA at the planting site, two hours plus from pickup. Sometimes, not actually this crew, but another crew, the driver gets up at like three or four in the morning to start that run of picking everyone up. There's a quick pit stop at a garage along the way. The convoy's on the move. Kinleith Mill glides by along with a few road signs. We're in uh, Maraitai. That's, uh, so we're at the back of Kinleith, which is close to Tukuro. Bursts from the CB radio mark our progress on the back tracks. And rap soothes the sleeping giants. Note to self, snooze until the last possible moment. Right now though, look lively. Is that everyone? Oh, a couple more. Um, PPE gear, everybody's all right with that. Looks all pretty good. New set of boots at the back there. Guilty as charged. Joe leads the safety briefing. Um, drugs and alcohol, still an ongoing thing, eh? It's good, um, everybody here is 100% drug free, which is good. It's uh, after the struggle. Um, what else have we got down there, folks? Uh, we'll be working a couple of hills in that today, so just make sure that you can see your next guy. Uh, probably one of the main ones I saw is all of these loose big rocks on the hills. Just be really careful, eh? We don't want anybody hurt on those hills. We haven't found cyanide yet. We haven't, you know, there's quite a few we haven't found, eh? So just keep an eye out. Hills and cyanide. Mmm, enough information to dread the day ahead. Not enough to know exactly how much. Time to saddle up. The tree planting harness, or instrument of torture, as I shall come to know it, fits over your shoulders like a backpack and has a waist strap. I think these are um, made for boys, bigger boys than me. On the back, attached at about bum level, is a rectangle iron cage. Oh, don't get the spade. <laughs> a box of trees gets dropped into that cage. Oh. Holy shit. Oh my god, how much do you reckon that weighs? Uh, at least 10 kilos. 10 kilos. Is it more? About 30, 40, 30. 10 <laughs> kilos. Might be more actually. What did you Other planters tell me it's more like 12 k's. The boxes are open at one end so you can reach around your back and pluck out seedlings as needed. Supervisor Joe is one of my bosses for the day. We march across the wasteland where the gangs spread out planting, dodging tree stumps and slash. Nature's junk, bark off cuts and unwanted logs, booby traps for tree planters. Far out, how can you even find any dirt in here? Right, <clears throat> this is real city slicker stuff. I kind of pictured it was going to be, I don't know, a flat field like planting wheat or something. As you can see, it looks like the lunar surface of the moon. Actually, more planet barren. Just do one at the front. Yeah, one at the front. One at the back. Joe reckons three shovel cuts is the optimum per seedling planted. OK, there's some dirt. It's a good start. But even he takes more in this scrappy landscape. Next, drop a seedling in the hole. How far down does it go, Joe? Oh, it goes right to the bottom. There. It doesn't matter if I cover up some of the greenery? No, nope, that's right. 
a couple of foot stomps to secure it and one down, 99 to go before the first box I am hauling on my back is empty. You make it seem easier than what I suspect it is. Pretty easy. Kim is the forest manager. The facts and figures in her head could make you dizzy. Time allowed for this job? Um, just under two weeks. And that's how many trees? Uh, it's about 100 hectares and there's 833 stems a hectare. Target in this block is 800 trees per person, so just under a hectare. And the guys have um, been achieving higher than that in most areas. And then on a day like today where they started with um, a tough start in all, the, in all the wood, it'll be probably on target or just above. Speaking of targets, when it comes to Shane Jones's billion trees, to date 44,386 hectares have been funded for planting. Using Kim's ratios, that's heading towards 37 million seedlings. What we plant here will count towards the billion, but it's not funded. For the 1BT programme, it's not allowed to have been forest for the last five years. So anything that's been in trees and harvested and is getting replanted within the last five years is not eligible for the funding. 1BT, that's forestry talk for one billion trees. To the side of me and Joe, one of the veterans is pouring the ground with his feet, checking for dirt under the slash. Note to self, try not to use hands, bending is bad, footwork is your friend. We head uphill like wobbly two-legged mountain goats staggering over the rubble. Me with the weighty planter box on my back. The plan is to plant a seedling every three metres, roughly three spade lengths. Is that deep enough? Or no? Oh, just about... Give me a free ride, Joe, if it's not deep enough, so <laughs> That's got to be deep enough. Maybe? No? Yes? Yep. Can you get away with that? Without chopping my fingers at all the tree in half. Our producer, Bridget, bobs by to inform me of not even been going an hour. I'm sweating like I've been running for about 15 k's. I was just saying to Joe here that I reckon I thought I would be feeling it in my backside and my legs, but it's my wrists because the ground is quite, um, quite tough. It is monotonous. Three metres, dig, plant. Three metres, dig, plant, repeat. Four metres to my left and four metres to my right, other tree planters are doing exactly the same. We're working in a grid. On quality control is Carl, or Chop, as he's known. More on that later. But right now, he is armed with what looks like a giant pole vaulting accessory, marked at various points with colour codes. We're just measuring the metres between and uh, the width of the trees. Get them in the right... Uh, Spacings, so we we just going through, making sure it's, uh, so all the cre trees don't grow, and they get too close together and start um, binding up with the branches. So a literal measuring stick of tree planting success falls short, and that is a replant. We call the planter back so he knows his mistake, and then he'll go back and carry on properly. Hey, Mr. Murapara, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> because he had a good sleep on the van on the way in. <laughs> There's some serious snoring going on, Joe. Oh, yeah. oh, no. It's like, I should have known something when they all took the opportunity to go to sleep. Mr Murapara and his smooth shovel technique glides from one seedling to the next. Me, I'm still hacking at the ground. This is the equivalent of being clocked in a race because they've already been out once emptied their little, you know, backpack thing, and they're coming back. Yeah, I'm being lapped in essence. Those guys coming up behind me are lapping me. It takes me about 20 seedlings to work out what the perfect box cut should look like, but I will spend the entire day trying to master it. Yeah. It's all in the technique. And mine's a bit shit at the moment, but... How long do you reckon it takes to get the hang of it? It takes a normal guy probably about two weeks to sort of get the... Oh, I'm feeling better now, thanks, Joe. Oh, what about that guy that plants 1,500 a day? Oh, oh he's been doing it for about 10 years. 
That's Terence. While I sweat it out, producer Bridget has time for a chat. I noticed that you've not got the box in your cradle. Oh, yeah, because it's just a bit heavy at the moment. I'll try and get a bit of, get a bit of weight first, and then, uh, then I'll probably chuck it on now. It's a bit lighter. And this is your second box? Yeah, yeah, second box. Are you the fastest at the moment? Uh, one of the fastest. Yeah, I could stay out here all night. You love it? <laughs> doing this, yeah, I've been doing it a long time, 10 years plus. Yeah, so it's, it's a walk in the park for me. Thanks for passing that on, Bridget. Note to self, minimise weight on back. Remember the garage pit stop on the way out here? I had two butter chicken pies, wheat bix, uh, a lasagna, and a bit of up and go, a can of mother. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit, eh? Just keep me going till lunchtime, which is 11 o'clock. And that feels a million miles and several hundred trees away. Do some people go after the first day? Yep. <laughs> yep. You finish up straight away. Really? <laughs> so if I stop now, would I be the first one? No, no. But the good thing is, Joe, I'm as stubborn as all hell, so we'll see how far we get. Look, I would say that 50% of people that turn up for the first day may not turn up for the second, third or fourth day. The 80% absenteeism consistently week in, week out, and that's with us trying to make the job really enjoyable and, and um, you know, really positive. Uh, I would say that probably only two guys are here, from, or maybe maybe four guys are here from last year's planting, so that's one year ago. We've probably replaced just about 50% of our crew. That's Darren, the contractor that supplies the planting crew. What are they doing? Tell them to get come back up on the hill, bro. <laughs> Supervision at its best. Finding a soft spot there. You can just get your spade in you and just sort of crevice it in. And, and a lot of them, we're getting them out of um, gangs and we're getting them out of, um, yeah, some of them have been naughty boys, but um, getting them out of that lifestyle, getting them into a drug-free lifestyle, working working hard and, you know, making good money. And so forestry work's always been viewed as being um, possibly the lower end of the work scale, but uh, not, not for us, eh? We want our guys to come here to be proud that they're working here and, and to make good money. Some of these guys are making really good money. These guys, are, we consider them to be athletes. In the year ending May 2019, the Ministry of Social Development's placed 283 people in forestry jobs. They need another 750 workers this season alone. Lack of money for some families in New Zealand can be can be um, a root of a lot of problems. Them being able to provide for their families a decent living, definitely I can see that that promotes a happier and a better uh, family life. MSD's job specs, reliable, punctual, drug-free, willing to work outside and be fit. A masterful understatement. It also estimates an experienced planter can knock off 600 to 1,200 seedlings a day. There's some hurdles for sure, tree stock, production capacity and the labour force requirements. We do rely a lot on overseas labour, mainly from the islands Fiji, Tonga and Vanuatu. During the safety briefing, the crew was given GPS coordinates to radio in in case of an emergency. Tempting after a redo is ordered on one of my trees. We're not embarrassed by hard work, are we, Joe? No, we're not scared <laughs> by it either. Learnt um, a lot about angles today, Joe. Don't want to have the shameful experience of having to redo it. Do you reckon you've earned enough to buy a pie? No, probably not. Although, what, there's a hundred of these in a box. I reckon I'm close to almost finishing one box. It's only taken me, what, about four times the speed that the other guys are going? We'll pay you in cash, but it might decompose by the time you get home. <laughs> You can just add it to the social fund, Joe, because I've kept you from your actual real duties. All right. The infinitely lighter weight on my back tells me I must be close to knocking off my first hundred trees. Hey, Joe. Mm? Can you just check? Can you just check? No, can you check in here? Are there any others? No. Cracked it. Yep. One down. One, two, one, four. I did run, Box. Shall I be excited Super. about that? Well yep. so the, Tell everybody. So, so 100, 100 trees at 30 cents a tree is... Well, 
25 cents. Oh, shit, I'm overestimating. It's a nice stutter when I said that. <laughs> tai hoa, it's actually 25 cents a seedling, not 30. So that's 25 of the hardest dollars I have ever earned. And it's time to reload. You strike me as being a really kind, sweet, supportive man. And, well, today oh. you've sort of fallen into the role of coach. How's she going? Well, she's doing actually pretty blooming good. Some of these guys here could learn a thing or two, I think. What could they learn off her? Well, probably a bit of patience. No, what do you... Uh, maybe not speed, but patience. I noticed the mist rolling in. It feels late in the day. It's 10am. The rain starts and the light changes. The conditions reflect my mood. A little damp, a little dark, as I get to work on the second box. About now, I discover the joy of working on a rare but delightful machine-cultivated patch. This is way faster. Like the planting on the mounds is much easier than when we were down lower, eh, Joe? Um, but I tell you what, when I emptied the first box, it was good when you've got about 50 trees left because that's about the right weight that you want on your back. When I put the number two... Uh-oh. Box on. Yep. Yeah, it was way heavier again. By now, my lower back is loudly telling me I am still doing too much with my hands. Underline, note to self, must stay upright and use feet more. And in terms of how long we've been here, I have no idea. But every time I see one of the guys walking back, I yell out to them. And that bloody Terence, who's like Superman, <laughs> I'm like, Terence, how many boxes is that? And it's like, five. He just walked past before. How many boxes, Terence? Six. How many boxes, Lisa? One and a half, probably. Bloody Terence. He's a machine. You can and, almost see the sparks come off him. Yeah, and also the guy that I like to call Mr Mudapara, he's like churning them out as well. Turns out it's almost lunchtime and Chop, a.k.a. Carl, whistles me over to move the smoko van. I mutter about not wanting the easy jobs. And three of the boys yell back it's because no one else has a licence. You can learn a lot about people while stuck in a barren wasteland for several hours at a time, including why a man with a perfectly good name like Carl is called Chop. I used to take one too many pork chops out of the oven dish, I think. Nothing to do with felling trees. Not at all. Not at all. He's an old friggin' um, chop muncher from way back. Glancing around at the crew sweating it out on Planet Baron, there is a second to wonder, is this Shane Jones's idea of Neff's off the couch? Come on, hurry up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it look like bloody snow drying, boy. Joe, Darren and Chop have been doing 4am starts on and off for 30 years. We're here all day as a something of these spades everywhere. So do you have a theory about the best way to unwind in the evening after a day's hard labour like this? And what are you doing, a hot bath with Epsom salts or what? Oh, I just have a hot bath and a big feed, really. What kind of kai? Um, plenty of mashed potatoes, hearty, just all meat, really. Meat, mashed potatoes and veggies, eh? Heaps of it, you know. These guys probably have about five feeds a day, you know. And then after a feed, into bed or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't got a missus, that's the best way. And if you have got a missus? Yeah, well, you've got to stay up and listen to that thing going on, eh? But, uh, How long does that take? Yeah, oh, it could be, could be hours in it. Just don't know. You just luck of the draw when you get home. <laughs> you of all people should know that anyway. We're called in for lunch right when the going is good in another pre-dug patch. Do you know what? I'm going to shove something in my gob and keep going because I reckon if I sit down, my backside will seize up. Or maybe my back. <laughs> so I reckon, I reckon it's worse to stop. And anyway, if I stop, that just means they'll get like 10 boxes ahead of me. And that just will not do. <laughs> Most of the crew eat on the fly. They don't want to miss out on their share of the cultivated section where they can plant faster. Note to self, cheese sandwich, not worth giving up cultivated row. I plod on. How do you think she's going? I think she's doing rather well, actually. Well, have you noticed a difference in her technique? Is she improving over time, or is she just as rusty and... and uh... Well, no, she actually looks like she's taken a bit of that in. She's putting them in straight now. 
putting them in the right place. So, yeah, no, she's doing a good job, actually. Takes a little bit of time, eh? But what she's done today is, like, 90% of the job. What else is there to do? Where's the 10% coming? It's got to go faster now. That's it, really. Gee, it's taking forever, eh, that second box? It is. Note to self, producer has planted exactly zero trees. How old's, like, the oldest dude you've had? Um, 60, about 63, 64. What a mountain goat, he was still going at 64. Yeah, yeah. Still do it, it's like anything, eh? You're just used to getting up every morning doing the same thing, you know? It's just, it's a rotating door, you just come back every morning, that's what you do, you know? I feel not a day over 102 and am contemplating crawling into a hole of my own digging but for the extra effort that would require. I always think in the movies, Choppy, when they're burying bodies, you know, they're like out the backyard, <laughs> bloody burying bodies. They make it look so much easier than it actually is. <laughs> Mid-afternoon and I have a new supervisor slash babysitter, Choppy. Yup, Mr Quality Control with his measuring stick. Should I still put this one here, Choppy? Yep. OK. Apparently I've been going six hours at the moment. I'm not wearing a watch, so I have no idea what time it is, and it kind of seems to be getting a bit darker. But one of the guys walked past with a box before and said when he picked it up it was 1.30, which means there's you know, a few hours to go yet. Eek. I'm only up to my fourth box. Um, I've now taken to counting the trees as I put them in, so... <laughs> I'm aware of the fact that there is approximately 90 trees left in this box. 100 is a full box, so 90 to go to complete. Fourth one, and I reckon it will take me two hours. Uh, Choppy, am I going straight down? No. I'm coming through here. OK. And to date, 624 applications have been made for funding under the Billion Trees programme. Just 76 have been approved. Kim has two applications on the boil. So when I talked to them last week, they were saying eight weeks. I think they aim to kind of have it processed within two months. Um, but they're a bit backlogged at the moment, from what I understand. So it's a bit longer than that. Right now, the process is a little bit slow. Yeah. If they could stick to the two-month time frame, I think that would be good. I think it's given some people the confidence to employ a few extra guys. Um, there's a lot of crews out there who don't have guaranteed year-round work, with pruning not being as desirable as it once was. Um, so it's probably given them a bit of confidence to employ enough people. But at the moment, until we get that real influx of extra planting, which we haven't personally seen in CNI, then it hasn't created, like, heaps more. CNI, forestry talk for Central North Island. We are so close to knock off, I can almost taste it. Or maybe it's just the dirt. How many boxes are you on now? Three cutting, three cutting over here. Three cutting, yep. Uh, 11. 11, eh? What about you, Rakuto? Ten, eight. Just pull my things up. I, on the other hand, am gripping onto both the hillside and sanity. Note to self, hang in there. Uh, it's the weight for me. It's the weight of this. And I reckon I've got a few blisters on my hands. My office worker hands. You're following the guy with the big stick <laughs> who's measuring my planting. Doing a superb job. Uh oh. Hope they're not all waiting on me. Okay, better not be. I don't want to be the last one. Don't want to be the chick that's holding up everybody. Some of the crew have finished their last boxes and gravitate back to base. I do not want to be the one who holds up the van home. It is time for a last manic push to the finish line. Yeah, two left. Yeah. Lucky last. How good is that? <laughs> Give it a little tug. Passes quality control. Can you check that? Can you check that there's none left? Is there none left? Give me five. Thank you, bro. You were awesome. Today, planted by me, 400 seedlings. The crew's top planter today, 
1300 So if I was being paid, I would have earned 100 bucks before tax. Would you have her back again? Like, I mean, is she kind of the sort of the material that you'd hire? Well, yeah, we all hire anybody. You can put trees in the ground. The only thing left to do is drag myself back to the crew van. I'm coming down ass first, so it'll be all good. Note to self, where possible, avoid ever doing this again. Now, that item will go up on our Facebook page and online if you'd like to see me suffer in pictures. And just a very big thank you to Choppy, Joe, Darren, Kim and the rest of the crew who had me along for the day. They were the best possible people I could be doing that torturous shift with. And after six o'clock, we will hear from the forestry contractor, Nathan Fogden.